Hey everybody, it's still um, still Tuesday morning, it's still early, it's like 6.45. I think I'm going to call this Part 4B. Um, the second part of Part 4, I don't know. Anyway, when I think about the video I just did for you, I think it might be fun to listen to, it might be hear, great to hear stories, it might be a little bit motivational that, hey, this donkey can do it, anybody can do it. You know, you start a company... You make things happen, but what what are the lessons learned from those early years? And so, well, and this might surprise you, but I have notes, and I just wondered, to, what were the things I learned during those early years? That kind of ninety four to two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Um, you know, God, what is that? Fourteen years? The first fourteen years, which again probably seems like forever to you guys, um, but it's really not. So let me um, let me clean this up a little bit. See if I can not have so much light sticking in the glasses. So um, like watching me move my screens around, huh? All right, should have done that before. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, let's talk about some lessons learned. I mean, those early years, those formative years, that that really helped me establish a platform from which I speak to you today. Um, so as we grew from one to, to my first hire, so that's two, to the, to the 18 or 19, and then to the eventual, eventual 50, 60 people, as we got through um, those first task orders I was telling you about. So there's, um, one of the things you have to focus on is uh, your infrastructure, what I call business infrastructure, or some people would call corporate infrastructure. And there's two sides to it. And again, I do mild signs, this, not this, right? So I, let's talk about some of the things you'll need to focus on if you want to grow your company. And that's, I talked to you a little bit about the benefits package. If, to me, healthcare is number one. If we don't provide some sort of healthcare for our, for our, um, our employees, our staff, our families, um, I, I think you're going to get the best and brightest will eventually either not be attracted to you or leave you as soon as they can find something like that. So focus on uh, healthcare. Uh, my company has used Care First for since our inception. Um, are they the best company? Probably not. Are they the most responsive? Probably not. Do they offer the best pricing? Certainly not. But when you combine all the factors, like I have employees spread out all over the United States, and um, you know, we buy pretty high-end packages, but, but focus on healthcare, focus on the package, your, your benefits. Um, who's your attorney? Um, it shouldn't be a buddy, it shouldn't be a friend, it shouldn't be a family member. It needs to be somebody you have a legal relationship with who can advise you unpassionately, um, you know, without any impact or bias. Um, doesn't need to be an employee. A lot of these things don't need to be employees. In fact, I'd recommend not hiring any of these folks for a while. My, my attorney has been with me 10 years and he's still an outside attorney that I pay on an hourly rate. We just don't have that many legal issues here. I mean, we have some, but every year we evaluate how much money did we spend on our attorney this year. And if it ever approached a, a salary for a good attorney, we'd flip. But it never does, not, not in 20 years. So we just haven't done it. You'll need a bookkeeper. For a long time, that was me. And then I did hire a family friend and she did a good job for me for years. I now have three full-time financial staff here at DHA, but don't leave out bookkeeping, that day-to-day -day entry. I used QuickBooks for years. I did it every couple of nights at home after work. Um, that works, but someone will need to review your books. So if you're the bookkeeper, you'll need a CPA or somebody, I would pay an outside firm to look at your books. Because as you grow, eventually you're going to need a line of credit. In the line of credit, the bank is going to require reviewed financial statements. And at our size, we get audited. We have full audits done of our internal procedures and financial results each and every year. And we spend a lot of money on that now. So healthcare, attorney, bookkeeper, CPA, and the get ready for reviewed statements. Because the big one, the one that people don't talk to you about is the line of credit. The need for cash to continue operating your company while you're collecting. Because um, a lot of businesses, you don't, you don't pay up front or you don't collect at time of service. Some do, but most of the ones I, I know of don't. You actually perform a service and then we invoice. And 
Um, so for me, for my business, we serve for an entire month or a little bit more, and then we submit an invoice, usually to the federal government, and we get paid you know, 30 days, 60 days out. So I have to continue to operate this company for say three months um, with no cash. And so you have to have either built up enough cash, which we've done, we operate, we have a, we have a $7 million line of credit and we're moving it to 10 million on July 1st, but we don't use it, we don't need it. We have enough cash in the bank that we don't need. We self-finance the company now, but that's only been true for four or five years. We've used this operating line of credit on a regular basis. To get one though, you have to develop a relationship with the bank. And I would recommend there's three tiers of banks in the United States. There's community, regional, and national. I would go to a regional bank, like Dave's Bank. I mean, my local bank, my local community bank is uh, the community bank of the Chesapeake. And um, that's where my farm is and all that. We've outgrown their ability. They, they um, once you need more than seven, eight million, uh, the community banks tend to get nervous. I wouldn't do it. Then you move to a regional bank is where we are now. We're at BB&T. They're a regional bank. Until I approach the need for 150 million or more on a regular basis, I'm gonna stay with BB&T. I don't need Nations Bank or Capital One or something like that. In fact, I'm a knit to them. I, I, I don't move their needle. So beware when you do eventually need operating capital. <clears throat> I would go to a regional, um, God, a local bank and they're gonna rip you up. They're gonna want you to put your house on the line, all your savings on the line. Your wife or your husband is gonna to have to sign if you co-sponsor, if you have a co-sponsor on cars or your house, they're gonna to have to sign. You're essentially putting your whole life, your whole financial uh, life on the, on the table so the bank will give you a line of credit. Um, if you have terrible credit, fix it now. Um, that will hurt you. Um, so that's the business infrastructure you need to be getting ready for. If you, if you think about starting a company, that's a think you need to be thinking about that. If you have a company and you want to grow it, you must think about your infrastructure. Um, things that may be sexy but may or may not affect your business. Websites are cool to put up, but do they really help your business? Just make sure. You know, people think, spend weeks and months worrying about their logo or their name or um, what their card looks like. Um, and then maybe what their office space looks like. And I'm a bad example today because you're looking at a guy with 24 years in. My office was crap for years. I mean, it was my basement, a room in my basement for years. Um, it was my kitchen countertop for years. Even when we started to blow up, we rented a one room office from Regis um, for a couple years and then a two room and then a three room and then a four room. The, the progression to what you see in the video I put up about this headquarters it's 20 years of development. It's not from startup. So, as we grow, the thing is, can you, and I've talked about it in some of my older videos, but there's so many people new here that may have not seen it. The biggest concern when you go out on your own is, can you eat this meal while searching and hunting for your next one? Can you serve this client while you search for the next one? That's two full-time jobs. Uh, you know, and, and so just kind of be ready for that. Starting your own company, once you start it, it doesn't get easier. Once you get your first customer, it doesn't get easier. It gets harder. And so just be ready for that. <clears throat> and then where's your money coming from? Where's your client coming from? If you don't know who your first client is, don't, don't start your company yet. You know, really think through who's your first company, like who's your first client, where's your first dollar coming from, um, and this concept of business development, you know, we teach here is hot, warm, cold. And many people say, I'm gonna shotgun this out into a cold market. I don't know who my clients are, but they're gonna come, man. I'm, I'm so good at what I do, or my product is so amazing. I'm gonna shotgun it out. I'm gonna be on Shark Tank. I'm gonna be on, you know, TV shows. People are gonna just find my website and they're gonna flock to me. That is crap. Um, you need to use your hot leads, people you know, either your business contacts, your family contacts, your friends. Is this something someone's going to buy? I started DHA when, I, when someone approached me and said, are you interested? I'd like to give you a purchase order. I then jumped in the fog bank. Now I had six months to find the other side of the fog bank, but I, when I left my company, I didn't realize I was gonna get fired that day, but, but when I left, when I pulled that trigger, I knew who my first client was gonna be. And so that issue was solved for me 
I had five months, six months to find my next one. So just be aware of that. Know who your first clients are gonna be. Know where your money's coming from. That is priority number one when you go to start a company. The last point I, want, I think I wanna to talk to is my mentor, Keith Cunningham, he's Keith of the Vault, if you wanna go look at him. Um, a wonderful man, a wonderful teacher. Uh, changed my life forever. He taught, don't pimp your ride. Um, don't spend a dollar inside your business if it doesn't retain a customer or help you get a new one, all right? Don't spend money on all the crap. Don't, get out, don't go out and lease a new car for the company. Don't go out and, and build a nice home and say that's your home office. Um, you know, don't buy a $5,000 desk for your office. Don't do all that crap. Um, don't go out and buy the best computers and, you know, just don't do that. Don't, don't pimp your ride. Don't spend money on shit that doesn't care for a customer or help you get a new one. You know, there's plenty of ways to spend money. Put it in the bank. Get smart. It will help you with your line of credit. You'll sleep better at night. If you have a gap between client one and client two or customer 10 and customer 20, you'll be able to live through that gap better. You're gonna need to make payroll. If you have employees, you have to make payroll whether you have income coming in or not. So just make sure that you've got money in the bank or a line of credit to cover that. I feel better, I don't know if you do. I just wanted to give you some real life, rubber on the road, lessons learned that I had during those growth years, those early years, things that nobody taught me, and I just kept bashing my head into the school of hard knocks. Um, so those are the scars I carried away, kind of 12 minutes, so really this is a, almost a 30 minute part four video. I just wanted to give you the real scoop from somebody who really went through this, um, you know, and what I've learned since then. So now I think we're ready to talk about the growth years at, at DHA and the lessons that that taught me as well. So I'm sorry these are so long. I mean, it's so much commitment on your time to go through all parts one, two, three, four, and now 4B. And we're not even at the growth years. You know, we've got another DHA one coming up and maybe another lessons learned one. Maybe it'll be a five and a 5B again. I appreciate it. Please comment, please ask questions. Um, I just appreciate you being here. Um, it's, a, it's really become an amazing part of my life to sit here and talk to you like this and then respond and work with you, you know, interact with you um, through the comments. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.